bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. And welcome back, everybody. While well, the crawfish season came to a close April 1st and tonight, the Department of Marine Resources is sending a very strong message to fishermen, restaurants, and vendors regarding the illegal harboring of the crawfish. Megan Shepherd has the story. Assistant Fisheries Superintendent Clement Campbell reminding all residents that the crawfish season in the Bahamas is officially closed as of April 1st through July 31st. Campbell says that these months are especially critical to the marine animal as this is when they reproduce. The average lobster have about a million eggs on it. So all of it don't come for to fruition, them, but you have to prevent that and protect that. That's the resource of the country and we, we like to keep it that way. And the government is trying their best to like police it. But we still need the help of the public. The public is our main, main connection, our main information. With many events on the line for the summer months, Campbell is urging all restaurants, vendors and fishermen to declare all crawfish currently in their possession that they intend to offer for sale. There's still restaurants selling crawfish. And I want to advise persons who are planning to do the boat race um, vendors in West End to come in and see what they have, follow the form. We have the application at the office. Persons in the vendors in Freeport, and I know a lot of them, they're going to be selling crawfish. Also, the regattas coming up, they're going to be selling crawfish out there. But whatever's coming up, they're going to be selling crawfish out there. We're trying to get persons to be responsible for what they have during the closed season. Campbell warns that random crackdowns are being carried out by the ministry to ensure accountability. He is cautioning restaurant owners and vendors that failure to correctly report crawfish could lead to fines or even arrests. If you say you have 200 pounds for the closed season, we'd like to see it. Let me give you a letter of form that you fill out so you wouldn't get arrested. But for Pete's sake, don't be saying you have 200 pounds and you can't show it. Show and tell. Okay, so that's, that's the mission we're on right now. Campbell is also issuing this warning regarding another important marine animal. The bone fishing license that goes to natives and foreigners. You must get a license from the administrative office to catch and release the bone fish. Or else there's stiff penalties in that. Now Campbell says that the department has hired three other inspectors along with their partnership with the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, Royal Bahamas Police Force and the Customs Department. Now if you are caught with crawfish out of season that you have not declared or you have falsified your reports, Campbell says your fines and penalties will be at the discretion of the courts. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Megan Shepard. Well, former students from South Andrews High School here in Grand Bahama preparing to observe a major milestone at the institution. You see South Andrews High celebrating 40th anniversary with a number of special activities. Alumnus and board member Cleveland Duncan invites all to participate in these festivities. On Saturday evening, the 8th of April, at 7.30 p.m., we are hosting a gala recognition banquet in order of all of our former principals of this great institution on the four decade milestone of its history. We encourage all alumnus and friends of Andros participation and generous donation towards this and our annual scholarship fund drive. Now that bank was going to be held at the Marin Forbes Auditorium, Honoree Cecil Thompson served as principal in South Andrews High School from 1980 to 83. Although he has held that post in a number of institutions, he says that South Andros was special. I never met more highly motivated students than the students I was privileged to teach at the South Andros. Not only me, but all the principals there. And I put it this way very colorfully. There's nothing like teaching the sons and daughters of crab catchers, fishermen, kong divers, crawfish persons, sponges, farmers, etc. What I'm saying, it's the typical Bahamas of humble beginnings where persons had to work their way to the top. Those sons and daughters were highly motivated to get something called an education. Well, the Grand uh, Fair and T-Shirt Day raffle drawing will now be held on Friday, April 7th at the noon. It'll be at the school. And now, folks, we got to ask the doctor. Dr. Monique Pratt, welcome. Jackie from Nassau asked, 
I've been using dyed teas for many years now, but recently I was told that these teas might be harmful and that using them long term might lead to a form of eating disorder. Is this true? Jackie, thank you for your question. Diet teas are a popular choice for many people who want to drop a few pounds. Just like anything else, it is important to understand what diet teas are and how they work and if there are any risks associated with them before you put them in your body. Most diet teas contain a herb called senna, which acts like a laxative. This herb stimulates your intestines and causes an increase in elimination of water and waste by increasing bowel movements. While this may cause a reduction in a few inches around your waist, it is not true weight loss because there's really no increase in fat burning. As I mentioned before, the only effective way to lose weight is to eat healthier and increase physical activity. With long-term use of these products, there is a risk that your bowels may stop functioning normally, which might lead to dependence on these products. Long-term use can also change the amount or balance of some chemicals in the blood called electrolytes, which can cause problems with your heart rhythm, muscle weakness, liver damage, and other harmful effects. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Now let's look at news. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to sports.